All right, so I just kind of boneheaded because I just recorded an entire uh, sandbagger game without the audio turned on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this video here in the background, and I'm going to do another new commentary over this video I just recorded. I wonder if I can even do that. Whoops. Whoa. How about, can I play? Can I play? There we go. I think we're playing. Uh, okay. So I think we're recording. So this is, this is today's like a giant technology kind of experiment, I guess. Over here, I was sort of commenting on how many people had refused playing me. Um, you know, several reasons. First of all, right now, there's only like 1,200 or maybe 2,000 people online total on Tidrim, where during peak hours, is probably closer to like 15,000. So, I mean, it's not just not a lot of people on. But second, I think it's getting harder and harder for people to play me the at 11 The game has started. The game has started. Oh, that might have been kind of loud. Forgive me if it was. Uh, so we got, what do we got? All right, we're playing Go, we're playing a sandbagger game. So we start out pretty normal. Oh, and while this is playing, I want to tell you, uh, I, I really want to try to sort of color code some areas of the board. I'm going to call this Aji vision, I think. Aji being the Japanese word for taste, or the word we use when we're describing, uh, like leftover potential on a Go board, it's Aji. So this is our Aji vision. And, uh, right now I'm not actually color coding anything because... There's nothing really important to say, but the, the goal of, of this little experiment is to hopefully show you parts of the board that are more uh, interesting or, or, or at least settled. So, I mean, just give you more information at a glance so you don't have to, um, you know, really know a whole lot about Go to sort of get a feeling for what's going on. This is also kind of crazy because I have two mouse cursors. This is kind of fun. I could chase my mouse cursor around. Oh, I get distracted easily. Okay, so anyway, uh, I approached this corner. I could have made a Shamari over here and played Orthodox, but I decided to play a little more active. And uh, just decided to go in for the corner. And uh, White, White and I play this relatively newer Joseki. Um, I'm actually not sure exactly how Joseki my Joseki was. I'm pretty sure it's not actually that Joseki. I kind of made it up as I went along. Um, but it seemed to get an okay result. Because um, I was sort of able to attack the, uh, the lower White Stone, which was my goal. Um, so I'm just sort of looking for, for free moves here. Again, I have moves at like 4-4. Four, four. There's an attachment on top of the uh, on top of this stone right here. Man, this is going to get really confusing with two cursors. Uh, well, hopefully... <laughs> hopefully it'll be at least fun to watch. <laughs> um, but I'm also sort of looking at just taking this shape here and pulling back and just sort of making some sort of immediately more settled kind of shape. But in the end, I decided just to poke here. Um, which will help my stone get out a little bit faster. Um, because my, the idea here is I want to run this out and then come back and attack this. Although in the game, white has other plans. Uh, starting with this move right here. Oh, well, the nice thing about commenting on games is I can sit back and drink more tea. All right, so white pulled back in the game, which is fine. Um, it does give black a bunch of free moves and basically gives black more the outside. Now, I thought white might actually switch to taking the corner here um, and then coming back, but no, nope, white takes the outside, uh, which let me kick this and then come back here. And now, after this exchange, I'm sort of looking at this 3-2 point as being really important to the bases of both of these groups. If black gets this, black is basically 100% settled and uh, can attack white. If white gets it, black will use the move to come back here and attack here. So white doesn't either. White actually comes back over here to try to build off of this thing, except I think these, they're, they're, these two groups are much too far apart. So, you know, right now we've got we've got this stone that's kind of weak. We've got these two stones that are kind of weak. We've got this stone in the middle that's kind of weak. Um, White's also going to jump very far. This is kind of strange to see a two-space jump here. Um, this leaves very definite cuts here. Um, I don't think I really got to take advantage of it in a really meaningful way in the game. Oh, no, I guess I did. I guess I did. I take that back. Um, I, I only jumped one space in order to keep the cuts here alive. Um, White's trying to reinforce this cut, but all he's really doing is angering this stone, which in turn is going to put a lot of pressure on this stone. So, 
And white really needs at least one more move in here to get any sort of shape. So, you know, in the game we both jump out. And uh, keep these areas as having basically some weak, weakish groups. Just sort of running around the middle of the board here. Um, here I'm debating actually which one of these moves to play, because I actually have a lot of good options. Um, I could just play uh, the two space jumps here and here just directly. And they're both okay because I still have attachments here or peeps here, so I can actually fight if white wants to disagree that I can jump out that far. Um, but I can also play each of these one space ones right here, here, and here. I couldn't really decide which one I wanted to do, so I just played probably the one that put the most pressure onto this stick over here. Um, so we're both going to jump out again, again to keep this as a running fight. Um, this stone actually has a lot of meaning because, again, it actually threatens to come over here and hem this white group in from the outside. And when white plays here, uh, white is this is white saying, I don't want to be hemmed in. I want to make sure I have enough room to live and maybe even get some potential. Um, but white's problem here is that I, I think I can extend right here without too much of a problem, and even though we both have cuts, like white has a cut to take advantage of here, um, I have this sort of cut type thing down here as well. Um, so black could play Hane, black could draw back, black could even just sort of um, push into this. Um, black could even consider playing this kind of no B, um, but in the end I think the extension is just fine, which is what I played, partially because black still has peeps available. Um, but also because there is this Aji here. And so it's important to get out first. As long as, as, long as you're not going to die, you know, you do want to play the most efficient moves. And so at this point, White took the base in the corner to make sure he could attack me. But that gives me an extra move on the outside. And this turn is not at all small. Because now even though this white group is, is alive here along the side of the edge of the board. Uh, it basically has no more implications on the rest of the rest of the game. It's basically stuck here. And it still st still has some shape problems, actually. Uh, this honey is very strong because, again, there's no cut here because black has a ladder right now. Over here, I kind of struggled with the shape a little bit. Uh, it feels... This kind of feels like the attachment where I should... Just sort of Hane here and poke here, but I didn't I didn't like poking here because it helped White's shape too much. Um, this is also the kind of shape where you want to come back and make a tiger's mouth. Except White already has a stone here, so I eventually decided against it and just played this sort of, uh, oh, I don't know what you call that kind of shape, but flexible shape, some sort of flexible shape. Uh, which I eventually did. Um, but then in the game, I kind of expected White to turn here to make sure this group got out. Um, instead, White decided to use the Aji here later and take this uh, this eye, which was okay, but really not that good for him. I think it would have been more helpful for actually White to have gotten this group out, as you'll see later on in the game. Um, yep, so that was a shape I made, and this again helps stabilize my own group, and again comes back to put pressure on these three stones. So White has to do something to play um, to deal with this. So I could have sort of just pushed through and cut, and in retrospect, you know, maybe that's what I should have done. It just seems like white gets too much in the corner, and then gets a whole bunch of more Aji left over here, so in the end I just decided to play very, a little bit slower, a little more local, and, and just keep white, or, or basically allow white to connect those stones, but keep my groups solid, and keep my points that I had. Uh, I think this move for white was an overplay. Um, it seems like white needs to make this tiger's mouth here to keep the stones connected. Um, because once I got all this, I was happy to let white go into the corner. Um, because this this way, when I, when I now push through, my shape's actually a little bit better than it would have been had I done it directly. So, good for me, I think. Yeah, here, here, um, I mean, I'm going to cut here and just pull back, and I think that's the best... 
response. White, white will just get the corner now. Um, but black's not unhappy because now all of a sudden this group is a lot stronger. These three stones are either under severe attack or about to be dead. Um, I think the shape move for white is actually where this, where I had that little mark right here below it. Um, but white just took the Atari. And this is probably a bad exchange. I probably shouldn't take this yet, but eh, maybe it's fine. And again, coming from this way just to try to build something large over here, while at the same time subduing these stones and making sure my group can't easily be attacked later on. So in the game here, I was saying, I was, I was wondering what White was going to do about these stones, and I think White should Tanuki. I think messing with this is doesn't actually accomplish anything. Um, White ends up wasting a lot of moves down here. I don't really accomplish a whole lot. And after this, this move is actually a really big mistake for White, because once I connect over here, now all of a sudden, uh, it, White actually has a very much harder time attacking the potential of weaknesses over here. Uh, this group actually just got a lot stronger um, because I will have wedges later on. I think White misread and, and thought that there was actually some sort of real cut here. Um, I was still expecting White just to sort of give these up and come around th this way. Uh, this is actually not really a sente move. As, um, as long as... Um, I mean, it's true, White does have a cut, a push and a cut here, but then I just capture if, if, if the sequence goes like that, so that doesn't work. The more interesting looking move is for white to sort of uh, no be into this thing here um, and threaten to push cut here or, or even cut directly right here. Um, but even that doesn't really work because I just connect right here. Or actually I think even connecting here works as well, so I have two choices of connections. Um, white does sort of get a free move on the inside, so if white does ever have the potential to make two eyes in here, that this move will be useful but there's really nothing there. So again, I push outside and just really start building all this potential on the right, which is going to grow enormous. So White decides that now there's really no cut there to take the Aji away. And even though this gives White a little bit of shape, I'm really not unhappy at this exchange because it makes my shape so much stronger. And again, this is the area where I'm building. So if white wants to give me strong shapes all along the, the middle direction away from that, I'm perfectly happy. Uh, white cut immediately, and this was kind of a surprise because I don't think there's anything really here. Again, I have counter resources here. I, white has peeps that are kind of dangerous here and here. This ladder doesn't work for white directly. I have a free Atari here. There's me drawing out the ladder. Just, Again, when I originally recorded this video, I was doing commentary live, so <laughs> forgive me now if it doesn't quite line up. I really did want to record a video today so I could start working on AG Vision. Um, you know, color coding the things on the screen and having them move around and sort of fade in and fade out. It actually does take a lot of time, like several hours worth for every, you know, s you know small segment. And, uh, you know, in the future I'd like to do more of it, but... It's also really, really time consuming. So if you sort of like this format, being able to see, you know, the points that are going on over here and down here and um, just quickly identifying weak groups on the board, if this is really valuable to you, you know, let me know in the comments and or at least like the video and I'll see if I can do more. Like I said, it's really time consuming. So, you know, maybe it's the kind of thing that eventually works its way into being a one of my Patreon goals. Um, so I can sort of justify the extra hours and hours that I'd have to spend going back and recompiling and color coding some videos like this. Uh, but at the same time, I'm, I do want to experiment with it because uh, in my last video I also mentioned that, uh, you know, we sort of been thinking about how to bring Go to a larger audience, um, especially for audiences that might not know a whole lot about Go. Um, and this might be a way, a good way to actually sort of show what's going on on a, on a Go board so it doesn't look so immediately confusing. I remember, uh, you know, when I, when I first started learning Go especially, and was, you know, about 20Q, everything on the board just didn't make sense to me, right? I mean, I, I wasn't able to understand anything on the board just at a glance. I really needed someone to either spell it out for me or to go move by move. 
um, through the game to understand how things or why things ended up the way they did. So, yeah. Again, here's reading out this ladder. It's still, the stone has no effect on it whatsoever. Um, but eventually the Stroseki will result in white placing some stone over here, almost no matter what Stroseki choice. And again, I played solid over here um, just to make sure that I can attack anything that, any white stones that uh, white wants to throw in here. All right, so now this stone does break the ladder. You can see me read it out. And so we just will end up capturing, though we could consider moves like here or even here, other moves in this area that also basically capture the ladder. I want to capture the ladder though because uh, once I do, I actually have a whole bunch of more weaknesses I can exploit down here. This cut becomes kind of severe. Even though it won't kill white, it ruins white's shape. It'll basically mean I get all sente moves around this white group. Um, but white chooses to ignore that and uh, prevent his corner from being approached, which means I'll just take this directly right now. Now when white plays that way, that means I just capture his stick of five stones, and now my group is super duper strong without a care in the world. White does give me a little bit of scare here thinking that there's a real Atari, but there's not. This just doesn't work. Maybe White misread this again, thinking that this Atari would cut these two groups apart, but I just capture these four and there's nothing White can do. And uh, here, it does. I do have a little bit of a shape problem for White. Remember how White made this peep and connected, and forced me to connect here? Well, now all of a sudden, uh, I can actually cut through here and give White a real scare. Um, and again, this move, even though it looks like it's it's going to um, start this sequence where white can push here and I have to connect and then white can push through, it still doesn't work. Like, it's still not a thing. So, yeah. So we just come back and take the outside and attack this group now that it's been separated and again, I'm just I'm just leaning on this weak group while all of this area is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's starting to get really large. And here I I, I did Hane. Oh no, I didn't Hane, sorry, I extended once more before trying to come around. Um, but I could have Haneed. But I think this is better shape for me, especially when I already have so much profit right now. Alright, this move is a really big move. Like I can't emphasize how many points this is, but right now it's not at all important on this board. And that's sort of the problem. That you know, there's there's this has so much more potential here. White's under attack here. It's just cruel. Um, I think white should have actually played this out first. I think white can come there in perfect sente. Um, because if white does and I play up here, white can Atari and then Atari and just, you know, capture me back. So this is, this is sente. Or should have been sente. But I am happy just to go and really try to turn this into something. White throws a stone in. Because, you know, what else are you going to do when you're just down by that many points? There's just not a lot you can do. So I have to try something. Alright, so obviously I want to prevent this stone from getting eyes. I'm still sort of looking at this and making sure that there isn't some sort of push-cut thing that gives white a free move here, that then can give white another free move here. Um, just not seeing it. Um, I do play really defensive in the end. I decide the easiest thing for white to attack is actually this group. Um, and so I just sort of make sure that this group can get a base in the end. But, you know, another natural move is to play this way and make sure that this group can get a base. 
which white does respond to directly. I could uh, basically guarantee my base here like this, and maybe that's probably better, what I should have done. I, I decided to come on top just to make it a little bit more difficult for white to run out, because again, I'm not seeing how white gets two eyes down here, so white's going to have to run. <coughs> so we come back and undercut. And this really is sort of white's last desperation. Um, if white can't get this, white should resign. Uh, which white doesn't do for quite some time. White, white is pesky. White refuses to acknowledge the lopsided nature of this board. And white will take that because that's white's prerogative. White's right. Not really sure. White, white will push in there again. I think that's a bad exchange. All right, so if you're looking at this stack of white stones here, how do we get this to live? Not really sure. Again, the only, the only weak thing white has to attack is this stick. So whatever move I want to play, I want to make sure it helps me uh, stay strong. So I sort of back up here and... Again, white can never actually make an eye down here if I don't want to, if I don't want to let him. Um, in the end, I give white one goate eye so I can just really seal him in. White pokes there, but again, this is a big local loss. This makes this cut very dangerous now. But I never really take advantage of it. I'm, I'm, I'm just up by so many points at this point that I kind of stop working quite as hard. So far, white's n still not alive in this whole area. I'm running out of tea, guys. This is a problem. So here, there's also a little Tasuji shape. It's not the best shape in the world. Um, but if white plays here, there's a there's a key point right here. And none of the cuts work. So all of the black stones are all 100% connected at this point. There's really no other real weakness. White can get a free Atari over here, essentially, if I just play normal moves, but there's not really any real weaknesses. And white can only make one Gote eye down here. So at this point, the game's basically over. But we're going to keep playing anyway, because apparently white wants to get this group in a little bit of trouble and, you know, see what else can go wrong. And I take away the liberty here to guarantee myself the ability to Atari... Uh, white takes this, but again, this doesn't work. But that, this is sort of like the move that white's been aiming at forever, right? When white you know, sort of allowed this cut and played this move and then played this move. Like, white's been aiming at this move, but it doesn't work. However, this is really big. Like, this is really, really big um, when white connects up down here. Although I don't think that was the correct way to cut a two link up. I think white should have actually uh, played right there. Um, and I kind of make a mistake, actually, because I think I play the top for a move. But I should actually probably come back and play this. Yeah, I, all right, I probe over here to see what kind of potential there is for me in that corner. And this is, these are kind of pretty standard probes just to see if, what sort of free stuff you can take. You guys know the correct response here? Just actually just connect, don't play here, because then black gets more free stuff. So when white connects there, I come back and I reduce these corner points, which this is a really, this is a really big move. I mean, this is, uh, you know, if, if black gets this, basically white will get about four points in the corner, maybe four points here, maybe. That's really optimistic, actually. It's probably more like three points here. So white will essentially get seven points. Um, if white were to get that, white would get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Like, so it's like a nine-point move. I mean, probably close to ten. A lot of these little endgame moves are bigger than they look. White, of course, starts this co. Actually, this co is pretty cool. Not yet, but later on. Um, Black has no real interest in fighting a co, because white has so many threats with all, this, all these dead stones. 
know, you usually find that whoever's winning uh, will have a harder time winning Ko's. Like, whoever's winning in general will have a more difficult game for fighting Ko's, because if you're winning, that means your opponent has uh, basically things to exploit, right? It's, it's like the haves versus the have-nots. The more you have, the more you can lose. Uh, so white seals in, but in the end, uh, you know, while it's sente, it does give me this extra move here, which is actually a pretty powerful move. Um, and actually, this move actually, well, I guess I did take, did I take the co first? I guess I did. Maybe I played it one more time. I don't quite remember what happened here in this co, but I eventually get this move right here, which is pretty baller. Um, because once I have this move, that actually sets up some things down here. As we'll see. Although I think actually this... <laughs> the things it sets up technically are overplays, because I think white can offer an exchange. But white didn't want to play that way, because... I find that whenever I'm playing Go on the internet, my opponent always just does the most unreasonable thing. And I do need I do neither need to find a way to take this co or protect this, right? Because I don't want to lose all of this and then lose this and white saves these and then maybe have this die. Like protecting this is an absolute 100 percent must. So white tries to quash that that corner potential. And that's okay. We'll just jump in the other side. And basically, I'm just I'm just playing sort of a reduction game here. I'm not letting white make actually build anything big. Um, white plays very aggressive because white has to because white has almost no points, right? I mean, we've got five points here and maybe four. I don't know, half a dozen points here or so. Maybe another half a dozen here, maybe, maybe about ten here. So that's not very many points. I mean, I probably have more points than that, just counting my captured stones. Never mind the territory that they leave open behind once they're captured. So I'm going to capture these five, right? These five, 10, 11, 15, 20, 24. I've got 24 just in capture still left on the board. They're going to be coming off. So... Yeah, white tries to stabilize this group while exposing my weaknesses, which is perfectly fine. I'm not really, I'm not really feeling the need to really engage this group very strongly in any way. So I just connect. Again, I still have this cut over here. That white fixes immediately. So, sure. And again, this this actually really does reinforce both of these, uh, or, or the potential for any sort of cut wedge kind of thing here. And white jumps into my territory and reduces. That's a big move. I mean, it's over 10 points of reduction. However, actually, truth be told, if I really want to cut that off, I could still cut that off, um, but not without endangering uh, this group. And I'm way winning, so I play the worst move that I played all game, which is just to sort of back off here and just say, okay, you get that much and that's it. White plays another move that actually doesn't really do anything. But again, white is a little bit scared of the counterattack, because um, I can actually push in here and just immediately cut the stone off. Oh yeah, why didn't I, I mean, this is dumb. I should have done that. This is my worst move of the whole game, because I can just counterattack this directly back. I mean, there's, it's just game, like really game over for white. Letting white live here and get in is really really bad but I thought my opponent should have resigned a while ago so we're gonna try to bring a little more pain first and we play this which starts another co if white responds strongly if, if white doesn't respond strongly I'm worried that if I play here um, white, white will respond here first. And I think that makes the whole situation more interesting. So white plays here. If I connect... 
uh, white connects, I come out. Yeah, because I really need that move to make it work. But once white plays here, this whole thing just works fine. It's just, it's just a flower co for black. Where, yeah, you know, white plays that side too. Just try to stay alive, I guess. Although white could have just lived the other way. I'm just giving this up. Yeah, I'm not sure why white insisted on playing this way. White should have just not played this flower co for black and just given up this stone. It's really not that even big of a stone. So white's on crazy pills right now. We're, we're, we're hitting the point of the game where nothing really makes sense. Uh, this is a bad threat. This is actually a pretty good exchange for black. Black's happy to basically fix that shape over there. And if I really actually another I, at this point, I could have just cut this stone off right played here, you know, played here on white Atari's. I just pull back. White captures one stone, but then I capture this stone and then get all my points back. So I played a pretty sad end game here. I'm trying to help white. I feel bad for white. Again, I'm just threatening this group again when I play a move like this. I kind of regret not having played this as a co-threat. Um, I get it in later, just to prevent any sort of eye here so I can keep attacking this. But I really do regret that. So white plays here, that's fine. Again, we sort of expect all these extra threats from white, since white is has so fewer points. I'm trying to get this move to work right here in the game, and I don't think I can get it quite to work. Um, so I end up just deciding on this attachment. Um, but I get a really nice reduction sequence. Basically, this white group and corner end up being like three points. I mean, end up being nothing after I play this reduction out. I think white's response here is also kind of bad because it just gives black more co-threats, essentially. But it's probably one of the safer responses, considering that this white group is still in trouble. So we're shrinking that corner. White plays another threat, sure. Now I really have no Aji left in here at all. In that center area. And uh, white decides that that's not a threat, which I guess it really isn't in like absolute life and death terms, but look at the end game I'm about to get. This end game is going to go very well for me. Again, here's me thinking, I oh, I should have taken that. Just prevent white from doing something crazy like giving these up and just coming back in here and living. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So I get that. One move I probably sh I think. Overtime yeah, countdown has work, begun. Right? Overtime countdown has begun. Um, or does it? No, it doesn't quite work. I was sort of lamenting the fact I never really played this poke. Which is too bad. So I played here first. Again, really wasn't working too hard. Man, really should feel feel like I should have poked there. But we're just gonna keep harassing this thing. Cause uh you know this thing needs to be harassed. And at this point, white went a little crazy. This is this move's fine. But then white played a really terrible move. And played there. And I think I, I think white was thinking, you know, because I, again I can always come back and cut this off. But I have to assume he thought that this would actually allow um, this stick to be cut off. So this move would be sente. But it doesn't. Like he actually, this move actually doesn't allow for anything to be useful. You Nine, can't peep here. Eight, you can't poke here because I'll just connect there. Eight, you can't throw in here because I'll just connect there and there. Six, five, and so I think he thought it was Sente, but now it's not. It just lets me cut off the corner. And now he has to come back and live in Gote. 
So now all of this just flipped to black. Like this whole corner that was supposed to be white shamari. So it comes back and lives. <laughs> I don't remember what I did. I feel like I passed at this point. Like, <laughs> I don't really need to do anything to win this game. Like, it's just, I could just pass. Yeah, what did I do? What did Nine, I come up with? I'm sure it wasn't eight, good, because... Seven, eight, six, I don't have this problem five, where I get to this point in the four, game where I just don't really five, care. It's like, ah, I won. This game's decided. And dook, dook. so, yep, still just take more end game. Oh, actually, I think I think in retrospect, this was bigger because uh, white has some shenanigans down here. And this is the move I think white, when I might play this move, thought white was going to get be able to cut this off, but it doesn't work because this is just connected now. If white pushes, black blocks, and it's connected. Push, connect. Nothing. So, there's really not much left on this board. There's really nothing for white to do. And so... I think I click on the score estimator here. There you go. So yeah, black wins by 116. So that's a pretty huge win, but you can see all the territory that turned into black at the end that should have been white. So anyway, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this, and I hope you appreciated Aji Vision. If you want more to see more content like this, please like you know let me hear your voice. Like I said, it's a lot of work for me to, to actually go through and sort of put in these extra sort of markings and things and have them look nice and relative be relatively accurate. Um, so if you want more things like this, you need to tell me. Um, I think I said earlier, you know if if. This really does become a thing or a really cool way to introduce more people to Go and uh, make more high-level Go games accessible to new players. Um, I will be looking to do more of this. Um, but yeah, it's going to take some time to develop for sure. And if you guys have suggestions or ideas that are within my technical skill level of actually being able to implement, um, do let me know. Um, right now, my system for also adding these is not at all efficient. I'm just using Adobe Premiere. And you know, it's not the best. It's very time-consuming, and Premiere is kind of clunky in its own ways. So if you guys also have better ideas as far as how to actually, like, literally get, you know, the color coding and the text and stuff into these files for Aji Vision, I'd be interested in hearing it. All right, thanks, guys.